It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning.
Amen. Give a shout to the Lord. God is good. Amen. I want to thank you. This last week we had our Harvest Fest. We had over 300 people come through that night. It was awesome. I want to thank you for your donations. I want to thank you for serving. It was great to see you guys down there just mingling with folks and just seeing that happen. So I want to thank you for that. At this point in our service, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. How many know this is a generous church? Amen. Isn't that good? That's a good thing. So we just invite you as we continue to worship to come down front. You can also text to 863-617-7171. Just put the amount, put that number, and it'll take you through a process. But we just, I want you to lift your hands right now. Lord, I thank you. (laughs) I thank you that our lives are before you, God. And I thank you for your generosity towards us. God, we love because you first love us, and we are generous because you were generous towards us. So we just thank you, and we give you all the praise and glory. Everybody said Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. I will live only for you. I will lift these hands up to you. I will dance before you. I will shout it. I will shout it. I will live only for you. I will lift these hands up to you. I will dance before you. I will shout it. Shout it, I will live only for you. I will lift these hands up to you. I will dance before you. I will shout it, I will shout it to you.
to get in that water because I'm going to say, whoa.
it to him. Cause you Come on, lift your voice in this room right now. Lift your hands and sing that you are good. Come on. Sing what you sing. You sing, you sing. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your hands. Prophesy this morning. Whatever you need, he's here this morning. Sing it again. Right now, lift it up, lift it up as an offering. Come on. every impossible situation, Jesus, you're good. With every struggle and every victory, you remain the same. God, you don't change. God, when I'm on the mountaintop and when I'm in the valley, God, your character never changes. You are good. You're good in the face of life. You're good in the face of death. You're good in the face of rich. You're good in the face of poor. You're good in the face of God overcoming, and you're good in the face of when I think I'm losing everything. Good. Oh, you are. I want you to do this. I want you to lift your hands. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we just release the joy of the Lord in this house. We just release the joy. Come on, right now, I just want you to pray out loud and just ask him, say, God, fill me with your spirit, fill me with your joy. God, I receive the joy of the Lord this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God, in my weakness, you were made strong. And when you come, you bring your strength and you bring your joy. And so right now, we receive joy in the house. Come on, right now, all across this room, lift your hand, lift your voice, and say, I receive your joy. Right now, just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive right now joy. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. No. You're never going to let Never gonna let me I need you to sing. I need you to sing right now. You're never gonna let no. me.
If I can get if I can get the pastoral staff to come and make a line and any elders and their wives in the room, on that thought, he's never going to let us down. How many know the Holy Spirit wants to touch you and meet your need this morning? So if you have need of anything, if you're sick in your body, if you just need someone to pray with you to build your faith about a situation that you're facing right now, I want you to get out of your seat as we continue in worship and let them pray for you, encourage you. As we continue to worship right now, they are available to, to help build your faith up and pray for you because the Holy Spirit's not going to let you down. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's continue worshiping. Come right now if you need prayer.
to read you a scripture before we move forward. Hebrews 13, verse 5. I want you to find it up there, and I want you to put it in the amplified version. I want us to read this. Just keep playing, Jonathan. How many feel the Holy Ghost in the house this morning? Hebrews 13, 5. The amplified version. It says, let your character or moral disposition be free. Is that the right one? No. What's, it is the right one? Okay. Be free from love of money, including greed, lust, craving for earthly possession, and be satisfied with your present circumstances that what you have. For he, God himself, has said. Who says? I will not in any way fail you nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. I will not relax my hold on you. How many of you feel that the Holy Spirit has you wrapped up in his fist this morning? He's not going to let go. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to forsake you. You haven't done something that has caused him to let go of you. If anything, if you've done something that's caused him to grip you tighter this morning, somebody say amen. So let's read that one more time. Go back to, go back. Let your character more disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, harvest, lust, craving for earthly possession. Be satisfied with your present circumstances, with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake nor let you down. Relax or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. We're going to sing through a little bit of this one more time. And I just want you to find peace this morning in the fact that you are in the grip of the Father. And he has you. You're not alone. Let's sing a little bit more. Taste and see that you are good. I will taste and see that you are good. Yeah, I will taste and see that you are good. Taste, see that you are good. I will taste. 
Amen. One more time, I want you to stand up on your feet and just lift your hands, and let's just take 30 seconds right now and just thank the Holy Ghost. I want to just love on him just for 30 seconds. Just magnify him in this room. Just lift your voice and honor him. Honor him. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you. God, we say this, this is all about you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, shout of praise. You may be seated. Amen. I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you glad you're here? You could be outside freezing to death, right? Because it's November, you know. Praise God. Let me just real quickly, quickly say that um, this last Friday night to Saturday night from 6 to 6, we had 24 hours of prayer and worship in here. And uh, it's feeling right up in the house this morning. Amen. And so if you participated in that, thank you very much. Um, I love that we're ministering to the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you know that prayer changes things? Amen. Prayer changes things. His house is a house of what? That's right. So prayer changes things, and uh, I want to thank everybody who participated in that. I am so glad to be with you this morning. We've got some exciting stuff we want to talk about. Speaking of the uh, cool weather, yesterday I took my son to go kill a deer, and that was fun. How many of you know that's fun? Did something I've never done in my life. I hunted in shorts and a (laughs) T-shirt. If I could have got away with flip-flops, I'd have tried it. But but how many, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. How many of y'all raise your hand and say, I'm hot right now. It's hot in the house. Yeah, how many of y'all raise your hand and say, you're cold? Weird people. If, I wish we could crank that thing down about another 15 degrees. Amen. Of course, I'm wearing a jacket this morning, so that changed, right? Don't I, aren't I looking good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Matthew? How about, how about, how's everybody doing? God bless the Razorbacks. I'm trying to wake you up and get you excited. Hey, we did something this morning that's got some of y'all thrown off kilter a little bit. We sang three fast songs in a row. I know y'all were freaked out by that. Like, why are we so happy this morning? (laughs) I don't know what to do. No, you did not wake up and go to a disco. You woke up and went to church this morning. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, God's in a good mood today. Amen? He's probably been in a good mood most days. We just hadn't figured that part out. But God's in a good mood. He's happy, okay? He's got joy flowing out of him. Amen. So we are in a season of thankfulness. Somebody say amen. I want to talk to you about something that Cross Life Church is starting today. We've started, and we're going to continue. It's a part of our future vision, okay? I have been talking to you about the number one agenda of Cross Life Church is to minister first and foremost to the Holy Spirit, amen? Amen. We are priests in the kingdom of God. The writer of Hebrews makes that very clear. We are kings and priests in in the kingdom of God, and our number one function of our local church is that we are going to minister to the Holy Spirit first, So I do not apologize for having worship for 50 straight minutes. Amen? Amen. Matter of fact, we got done a little early today, didn't we? Yeah. Because our number one function is to come into the house of God and worship Him. Amen? And so that will always, without question, be the priority of this church. Good. I love that resounding response right there. The day that church becomes any, about anything other than Jesus are the days we've gotten off track. It's about him and him only. Amen? Whatever he wants, we want. Remember, because we're dead. Stand up, Josh. Everybody give this young man a hand. I do apologize for striking you so hard last week. It was an accident somewhat of an accident. How many remember the sermon I preached last week about being dead? 
And see, when you're dead, you don't get to choose the path of your life. How many know that you're a, the Bible calls you a slave, right? That you were bought with a price. You are not, the, the, the word says you are not your own. Chester isn't a preacher this morning because he chose to be a preacher. I grew up in a preacher's house. I told, I told God I wanted to move to Colorado, get out of Arkansas, and make money for a living. <laughs> so now I live in South Arkansas where it's 81 degrees in November, and I'm a preacher. Okay? But I didn't get to choose the will of God for my life. It's the will of so he said, do this. I said, yes, sir. And I've, I've found that in obedience unto him, I've found the greatest pleasure of my life. And so sometimes the Holy Spirit asks us to do things, and it's not, we don't have the right to say no. Amen. If he wants it, he gets it. It's really that simple. Amen. And so last year, about, it was before Christmas, and I'd walked into the office, and Pastor Matt's office is right next to mine, and I'd walked in there, and I said, good morning, how you doing? He said, I want to talk to you about something. And I said, all right, what you got? He said, I've been praying, I can't get this thought off my mind, so I've been praying, and I feel like we're supposed to do something. Cross Life Church is supposed to do something to minister to and help uh, one of the public schools, Retta Brown, okay? And I said, okay, that's interesting. And uh, I didn't really do anything with that. I prayed, I mean, I'd think about it every once in a while and pray about it, and it wouldn't leave me alone, okay? And then after, it was after the first of the year, um, I decided that, you know, this, this wasn't just a fluke idea because it wouldn't leave me alone. I thought, you know, I'm gonna investigate this some more. So I called and set up a, um, meeting with uh, the principal at Retta Brown. Now, the principal there is a scary person. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. Anyway, so, <laughs> I mean, real intimidating lady. And uh, anyway, so I called and, and said, excuse me, can, 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 can I, I, I meet? <laughs> and so I went by the school and I sat down with Miss Bethany, Miss Hale, excuse me, I'm going to try to use your uh, official title today, Miss Hale. And uh, I said, Miss Hale, if Cross Life Church wanted to be involved in helping this public school, Red or Brown, uh, what would that look like to you? And she began to, I mean, just like that, she had a list of ideas. Boom, 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 boom. Now, before I go any further, is there anybody here that went to elementary school at Red or Brown? Raise your hand. No, stand up. Stand up. I, some, I'm assuming you are currently going there, right? <laughs> Raylan Parrish went to school at Red Wow. Was you, you went to the inaugural class, were you? <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Sat down with Miss Hale and I said, Miss Hale, what would it look like for Cross Life Church to get involved in this school? She talked to me about it. She gave us some ideas. She talked about how uh, at, at their school they really don't have a parent teacher organization. And I thought, what would it look like if we became an organization? that if we stayed for a decade and helped them out, that we could totally change and transform a school just by serving it. I wonder what that would look like. So she talked to us about it, and the school year ended, and we didn't really get involved in anything. Okay? And then, after that, right before the school year ended, the secretary of Red Brown had been there for a long time. How many? 20 years. Mrs. Buttersworth, that right? She'd been there for 20 years, and she decided to retire. And my wife was approached with a job. Now, my wife had a great job. She loved her job. And she was approached with the, uh, with the idea of becoming the secretary there. And she liked the idea of having summer off. <laughs> she liked the idea of having Christmas and holidays off and spending it with her children, all that kind of stuff. And so she was interested, wasn't searching for a job, didn't go looking for something something came looking for her, okay? 
And, and so I thought to myself, you know what? She, she, she got a resume. It was a great resume. She put it together, and I thought she's going to get this job. That was at, before the school's end of the year last year, and she did not get hired. She is today the secretary there. She did not get hired until like two weeks before school started. That's, that's two, or two and a half months almost. And I went from a position of, oh, this job is hers. She's got it. I'm a man of faith and power. I pray and declare she's got that job in Jesus' name. To 35, 40 days later, why is this taking so long? Right? To 60 days later, God, don't break my wife's heart. Right? <laughs> and and break. And I went in in. in Somewhere in the middle of where you started to feel uncomfortable because things weren't going your way. I said, God, I really want her to have this job. It's her heart's desire. As you said you'd give us a desire of her heart. It's her heart's desire to spend summers and holidays with her children and enjoy them. Okay? And so let's, let's, make, you know, let's make this happen, Jesus. And then clearly... He spoke to me, okay, and he said, I have a plan for your church at Retta Brown. She's going to get that job, okay? Turned out she got that job, and so we have Miss Hale, and we have Miss Passmore. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> and they are, they are on the faculty and the staff there at Retta Brown. This is what I want to say. All across the state of Arkansas, all across the southern state, South Arkansas, all across Union County, all across the district of El Dorado Public Schools, there are kids in need. Okay? There are kids who have to take home backpacks to be able to eat at night. There are kids who have to get clothes at school because that's where they get their clothes. There are kids who need a friend, someone to talk to because life is, is terrible. That's all across the district. And if I had our way, I wish that our church was so large and had so much money, we could impact every school. Amen? Amen. But we have a connection at Red or Brown. We have an open door through the people that we are connected to into that school. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to do something about helping that school. Okay? Okay? So what does that look like? I don't know. Well, what all does that entail? That's a great question. But I've got to believe that if we said yes to serving that school over the next decade, that it would be different. You can't tell me that you can put a dozen, two dozen, you can't tell me that you can put a hundred people coming in and out of that school who are men of, and women of faith, power, and love, going in there, just the presence of God on their lives, just just as silently walking through the hall in their mind saying, in the name of Jesus, I just fill this school with your presence right now. Okay? You can't tell me that them that you smiling at a, at a child and, and giving them a Coke float like we did on Tuesday. Did, did we buy the Coke floats? On Tuesday, on Tuesday, how many kids would we did we, did we Coke float? Huh? 165 kids got a Coke float courtesy of you. Okay? On Tuesday. A, a Coke float. <laughs> See, you think that's not a big deal. Except the Bible says stuff like um, when, a, when, when a prophet gets a, cold, a glass of cold water, that there is a reward that comes through that prophet because he, he received a glass of cold water. Right? How much more a Coke float? See, I want to say this. I want to say this right up front. Listen to me. This is not about us. This church is about Jesus, and this church is about other people. And we might be lucky to place third on that list because the house of God is not about us. It's about him, and it's about others. The two greatest commandments, love God Love people, okay? 
And what would it look like to selflessly and, and un, uh, how should I say it, um, unbiased. In other words, I don't want the credit. I don't want the fame. I don't want the reward. I just want to be giving. What would it look like if a church decided to go and give and pour their resources, their time, and their service into a school? And 10 years later, I think it would look different. Not that it's bad now, not that there's anything wrong, but that school with the, with the support of a church behind it, pouring and loving on those kids and, and serving those teachers and serving that staff and serving that, that school, I got to believe in 10 years we could, we could see something shift in that particular school. And so that's what I'm talking about this morning. Real quickly, I want to bring Pastor Matt up here. And he's going to tell you specifically some, some details, some practical things that I'm, I'm referring to when we talk about serving that school. Pastor Matt, give him a hand, will you? As Pastor Chester said, we've already started working with him once we met, sat down and met with um, Principal Hill. <laughs> once we met with her and kind of got an idea, we jumped right into it, and, and we wanted to announce it sooner, but just schedule-wise, we weren't able to. But something that I want you guys to understand is that, as he said, we're here to serve them. So we just said, what do you need? We'll make it happen. We're going to figure out how to do it. So we've already been down there. We, Like he said, they've got some pictures. Show those out for me, guys. They have some pictures. They did, oh, that's my son. We went and picked up some stuff for him, and uh, they just needed somebody to just deliver some stuff from Walmart. Walmart donated a bunch of stuff. Last Tuesday, this was our crew that went and served Coke floats and did a great job, and they got another picture of them serving those floats. But they've done that. They've already gone. We did. They had a popcorn party not too long ago, and, and our crew went down and served them. Um, every Friday morning, this is something kind of funny. Every Friday morning, Mark Pennington, where you at, buddy? Where's Mark? He's back there somewhere. Mark Pennington, there he is. He goes every Friday morning, and he pick, goes to Sonic, and he picks up a drink for all of those teachers. Because it's something about El Dorado School District. They love Sonic. It's like they're addicted somehow. I'm not sure what it is. But every Friday morning, he goes, and he picks up those drinks and delivers them every Friday. And we'll do that as long as there's a Sonic and there's teachers and a love for Sonic. But we do that kind of thing. Um, so our uh, Pastor Diane, she organized a bunch of ladies that when they had a, the, the parent-teacher conferences, we made the teachers a big giant meal before the conference, and then we had cookies and all kinds of stuff out for the for the parents showing up and just serve them and just kind of were there just to serve them. Miss um, Pat Stringfellow, she's already had a crew down there organizing some closets for them, getting some things together. Um, we've just just all kinds of things we've already started at, but but we have she has a, a long list of things we're going to do. So I want to kind of let you know. So coming up on the 14th, Tuesday the 14th, we are going to serve a Thanksgiving meal to their entire school, parents, siblings, kids. They gave me a number last week of 341 people RSVP'd for this thing. I was, I, we were expecting a couple hundred, 150, and so we had a great crowd. We're going to be doing that at the El Dorado School. Um, we've got us and other schools or other churches are helping. They're making stuff in College Avenue's helping. Um, Douglas Chapel's helping some different places. Places, But we're going to go to the um, high school. We're going to serve it at the high school in their commons area. And all the kids are going to be there that, that night at 530, all the kids and parents. And we're going to go and we're going to serve. We're going we're gonna, to, if, if I can help it, we're going to walk the place to their tables and just say, hey, we're blessed and love to have you here and glad to have you here. So we're going to need your help to do that. I'm going to need a ton of people. I got Miss Raylan Parrish. She's going to direct my volunteers for that event. And so I need your help with that. We're going we're gonna to be doing goodie bags um, just making goodie bags for Valentine's and Christmas, just putting things together to bless the kids. We've got another student conference coming up. When's the next student conference? What's that? February. February. So we got another one, so we'll do another meal for them. Um, we're going to help them with a spring fling that they have every spring. We're going to help them with that. We're going to do some maintenance things. They've got a bunch of stuff that needs painted. So we're going to be painting in their, in their uh, teacher's lounge, in their halls. We're going to help them with that, and we're working on that. Um, just assisting teachers. How many of you know teachers a lot of times have a lot of things to do? My wife was a teacher, and she spent a lot of evenings cutting things out and putting things, and so we're going to help them with that. We're going to get their stuff and put that together and make that happen. Um, they do backpacks that they send home to kids with meals. We're going to help stuff those bags, provide food for that. They've already got a bunch, but to provide more and help stuff those bags. Another thing I'm excited about is doing the... Um, Going out there, and we haven't got this set up yet, but I want to see it, and they want to see it, is that going out there in the mornings, and our people are out there welcoming them when they get off the bus, saying, hey, good morning, it's good to see you. And then when they leave in the evening, say, hey, you have a great evening. Just being out there and blessing them, being a smiling face just to encourage them. So we've got that. And there's other things. I won't get into all the things, but we've got a bunch of things that they want us to help them with. And so I'm, I'm extremely excited. Now, I need your help because, <laughs> believe it or not, 
Mark Pennington, myself, and Pastor Nyan can't get it all done, okay? So we need your help. If you'll go to crosslifechurcheldo.com, and it says get involved, there's a, one of the tabs is get involved, and go ahead and scroll down for me, Mark, and you can go down there, and it talks about red or brown and talks about what we're doing, and then at the bottom of that, it's really small writings, you have to go, but right at those two boxes, one says um, I'm interested in helping, and another sentence says to donate to the Red or Brown School Fund, but if you're interested in helping, if you'll click on that, It'll ask for your name and your email and the different areas that you might be interested in helping. And that way I can kind of get a database of who's willing to help and kind of know. So if you'll do that, or if you don't want to get online, you can come talk to me and hand me a piece of paper or text me or somehow get me your name and email so I can kind of have a database. But it's just, it's exciting to see what, not something we're going to do for one year, but that we're invested in the long term. I compare this to our investment in Nicaragua. Like, we've been with them a long time, and to see the changes that God's doing, and that's the same thing. I want this to be our local Nicaragua. Does that make sense? Where we're going in, and we're blessing them and seeing what happens. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite Bethany to come on up here. You know, I've known um, Bethany since I moved here, and consider her, huh? Miss Hale, excuse me, Mrs. Hale, Mrs. Hale. She's been a friend of mine since we've been here, and her, her family and such, but it's been neat in this last time, because I've been down at the school a lot. And, and dealing with her and dealing with different things down there. And to see her, I've always seen her here when we're out doing things, but to see her in her environment, you know what I mean? And to see her with those kids, and I want to tell you, we are blessed, El Dorado School District is blessed to have staff like her. She's been there three years, been the District 9, and just blessed to have somebody that loves our children as much as she does. So would you give her a round of applause? I got to read my notes, so... Um, when Chester asked me to speak, I was like, oh gosh, I don't know what I'm going to say. And then immediately I thought about, I like to journal. And so I thought about a journal entry that I had written, um, like the week before. And it, I just wrote why education. And so I'm just going to read that to you and then I'm going to sit down. Um, (laughs) why did you choose your career? That was the very first question I wrote. And this is an important question that I feel that we all should ask ourselves on a regular basis because it keeps our purpose at the forefront. With this being said, I chose education for so many reasons, but let's just start at the beginning. When I was in kindergarten, my kindergarten teacher asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And immediately, without even thinking, I responded, a missionary or a teacher. What I didn't know then that I know now is they're both one and the same, so I get to be both. Um, Educators are missionaries, and I love what I do, and I consider it a great privilege to serve the people in my community and their most prized possessions, their children. Each and every parent send us their best. It's a lot of responsibility, and I take it very seriously to be entrusted with the lives of those kids for 178 days a year, seven hours a day. That's a lot of time. They're with us a whole lot more their waking hours with us than they are with their parents most of the time. And the parents give us their best, so I should give them my best. I have the opportunity to make a difference in hundreds of lives each year. So why education? It's simple. I want to make a difference in the world today, and what better way to do so than with America's future? I want to show each and every student I come into contact with that they can be somebody. They have such potential, and they need to lead. They need someone to lead them in the right direction. I want every child to know who they are. I want them to believe in themselves, and I want them to know they can do anything they put their mind to. Is it going to be easy? Not always, but with hard work and determination, they can do anything. Love is another reason I chose education. Well, actually, I truly believe education chose me. I want to show students love on a regular basis. Love is vital, and so much can be done without it, but with it, well, you can move mountains. I want to move mountains. I want to make a difference. I want to leave a legacy. When I die, when people talk about what I did and who I was, I want them to say, she loved unconditionally. She served selflessly and she impacted so many lives. So take the challenge with me. Work to make a difference. Leave a legacy. Serve selflessly and be the best you can be because as Christians, isn't that our greatest calling anyways? Thank you. If you're here this morning and you work and you work in the school system in any form or fashion, whether it be uh, Elder Raiders or any school system, I want you to stand up on your feet real quick. I want you to look around. I want you to honor these people right now for, for their gift. Thank you. You may be seated. 
We have a special distinguished guest with us this morning. His name is Mr. Jim Tucker. I met him years ago as a um, student pastor. I've been doing student ministry for 15 years. Eight of those, or about seven of those, was here in Cross Life Church in El Dorado. And I'm impressed with this man. He is now the superintendent of the school district of El Dorado. And uh, I'm impressed with this man because in so many districts across the nation, in this, whatever, the state, the nation, um, youth pastors being, I've lived in different parts of the state, youth pastors were uh, not invited or to be in the, on the campus. And uh, I can remember Mr. Tucker as a principal at the high school calling meetings to meet with the youth pastors to say, guys, what you're doing is making a difference and thank you and keep helping. Okay? Back in the day when I used Twitter, I don't use that no more. President Trump uses it enough for all of us. Amen? Anyway, <laughs> he used to be on Twitter, and I don't know if he still is, but it impressed me because you have this man, and religion and education are such a sticky point with, with, with educators, right? You know what I'm talking about? And I love the integrity of this man because he would do things with integrity as far as the school is concerned, but he would also do things with integrity as far as his personal devotion to Jesus is concerned. And he would all the time post scriptures or encouragements about God on his Twitter, and he makes no bones about he is a man of God, and he believes in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I've always appreciated about that about him. I want you to stand on your feet and welcome him to our pulpit as he comes and shares about how we can help in that school. <laughs> you can definitely sit down. <laughs> I'm not that distinguished, I promise you. I am a Christian, and, but I'm working on being a good Christian, and there is a difference. I, I can guarantee you that. Um, you should be very, very proud of Bethany. I, I am, and you should be as a church. I know you've got to see her grow up, and, and some of y'all probably helped raise her, and she does a tremendous job as a principal. And and uh, I, very, I feel very fortunate that we have her in our district being Principal Retta Brown and, and thank her very, very much. I, uh, hey, y'all know how to worship now. That was fun this morning. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the praise team and Sherry and Lacey and everybody else that joined them, wow, that was, I'd prefer to put the mic down. Let's do that again. But, but, uh, Brother Chester did ask me to say a few words, so I'm going to do that real quick. Um, I want to make a confession real quick. When I go to my church, I, okay, I get up, I iron my clothes, I put them on, I sit in the back, um, I praise, I worship. Most people don't see me. I'm out the back door. And because of that reason, the next day I wear the same clothes to work on Monday. So, so uh, I work with several people in here, so when you see me tomorrow, this is what I'm going to have on, okay? It's just... I've been doing it for 20 years, and it works. So I, I will wear something different too, see, though. Um, how many of you guys and women go deer hunting or have a deer, yeah, okay, have a deer camp that you go to with other people and you fellowship with them, okay? How many of you guys and women have social groups that you're part of and uh, you interact with people on a daily basis or at least a weekly basis? How many of y'all have a hobby that involves other people? How many of y'all have a job that you have to work with other people? Okay, yes. Okay. So I would dare to say that most everybody has opportunities throughout the week and probably each day to interact with people. Now, don't raise your hand on this one, okay, but I just want you to think about this for a moment. How many have shared Christ? with somebody in the last year? How many have shared Christ with somebody in the last month? How many have shared Christ with somebody in the last week? Okay, and don't, you don't have to raise your hand on this, but how many of you have shared Christ with somebody every week for the past year? Sharing Christ is the number one job of a Christian. It is the number one job. That is why you are a Christian, is to share Christ with other people. We come to church to worship the Lord, to get our cup filled up, 
And then we're supposed to go out during the week and we're supposed to empty that cup everywhere. And if we're coming to church and we're filling our cup up and it just dribbles out throughout the week and we're not pouring it out on people, we're not being the Christian that we're supposed to be. Now, I'm guilty. We're all guilty of this. I mean, this takes a very intentional and concerted effort to do, but I want us to keep in mind that true Christians, to be a really, really good Christian, you are supposed to, by the Great Commission, go out and share Christ with other people every opportunity you get. Now, I know that's not easy. I mean, it nerves come into play. You get scared. You know, I understand that. I, I suffer through that all the time. And like I said, I am a Christian, but I'm still working on being a good Christian. And in my mind, a good Christian does that. That's what they do. They share Christ with people. Now, there are churches that really boast their missions. Uh, they go here in another country. They go there in another country. They go there in another part of our country. And all that is great. And all that needs to be done. But I want us to keep in mind that we have a mission right here in El Rey, Arkansas. You know, and if we're going to be a good Christian and we're going to do the Great Commission, like Jesus said, hey, we're right here. You know, we can do it every day. We can do it every week. We can do it every month. Now, in my opinion, the public schools in the entire country, but since we're in El Rita, let's talk about El Rita. The public schools are the most ignored mission field that I can, that I can think of, period. Now, there are reasons it's the most ignored. It's difficult, I mean, how do you get into a school and witness? You, well, you verbally can't do it. You know, I mean, we have laws. But I greatly, and it gives me chills just right now as I'm thinking about it, I greatly appreciate Cross Life and what you're wanting to do with Rudder Brown. It can be a game changer. Now, I think it's very special that you're doing it because you have the ties there. You have Bethany, you have Missy, and, and you have a tie there, and it's something that you can focus on. But how, how do you be a witness in a school? How do you do it? And that's a hard question. Now, when Brother, Brother Passmore came by and visited with me, um, I, I've had different groups and different pastors and different churches come in over the years, and they want to adopt a school, and they want to do this for the school, and I'm always a little leery about it, but we go for it, and, and for the most part, it's usually good. But the, the part that really bothers me is that a church will come in and hang around for a month or so or maybe a year, and then they leave. You know, and, and uh, you, you don't see them anymore. And, and why that reason is, you know, I don't know. I, I have my assumptions that maybe it's because they didn't feel like they could get those people to come to their church or, or they weren't seeing a return on their investment um, as far as seeing souls saved. Um, and the thing is, that's, that's not our purpose as a Christian, to get them to come to our church or, or to see an immediate return on the investment. That's, that's not our job. Our job is to share Christ. Now, how do you do that in a school? Okay. When he said decade in my office, he, he had me right then. When he said decade, I was all in with Brother, Brother Passmore. I mean, that, that's the key, guys. That is the key. It's being there long term. When you have a group that comes in occasionally, then what, what those people see are good people. Okay? But when you have a group that comes in over the course of a decade, they're going to understand that this is the act of Christ, that this is Jesus working, that this is not just good people bringing coat floats or this is not just good people greeting people at the door. When you're there long term, there is something special there. And you're going to see a return. What? No, that's not true. You may not actually get to see it, but Christ is going to see the, see the return on that. He's going to. And, guys, that is what matters. It really, really is. Now, I wanted to share one thing with you, and Brother Passmore said it was okay if I did. Um, we do have a church in El Dorado that has adopted another elementary school, and they did it five years ago, and, and they're in it for the long term also. And 
this is something that I would like for you to pray about because you really, really need to pray about this because this is a commitment. But to really change lives, you have to build relationships with people, and you have to do that over long term. And what this church is doing, they're using a model by Tony Evans, and Tony Evans is a real popular pastor, and he has a mentoring program in Dallas, and he has training, and this church went to the training. They came back, presented it to their church, and what they do is they have a group of mentors that go through training. They're overseen by the church, and they go into the school, and all they do is they visit with the child one-on-one, maybe one-on-two or three. There may be a group of two or three of them, but they do it every single week. They do not miss. And it's that consistency is what made the difference. And it is changing the lives of a lot of these students because they have a consistent adult that they know cares about them and is investing in them just in time, nothing else. And they know that person cares about them. And then if that person's in second grade, when they're in third grade, they have that same mentor. When they're in fourth grade, they have that same mentor. And that mentor will follow them all the way till they graduate. And we've seen a big difference with this group of students. This is our fifth year to do it. And we have students that are doing better academically because of this. it's just that relationship. And it... They're not talking. I appreciate that. I can see y'all <laughs> wake up over there. No. Um, you know, they, they really get to build that relationship, and eventually they, they see that this person is special. You know, there's something special about them, and eventually they're going to understand that this is Christ working. So I, I encourage you to pray about that. It, it is a game changer. Uh, working with the uh, physical needs of the staff and the students is a game changer also. And I'm so, so excited that you have committed or that you're asking them to commit to a decade of this. That will make a difference. I promise you it will make a difference. I'm so, so thankful for you. And I greatly appreciate you. And thank you for letting me share with you just for a moment. So thanks. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I want to try to paint a picture here for you with what he said about the mentoring program. Imagine that you signed up to say, you know what, okay, I'll help Cross Life Church. And I want to start off by showing up at 7.30 in the morning and just as kids get off the bus waving, good morning, God bless you, have a great day, pound it, you know. You know how it is? Elbow, elbow, whatever, pound it. Great. Well, good to see you again. You start learning their names, Right? Start learning their names, and then, and then you know, you find out that we need we need a volunteer once one hour a week to come and just read to some kids who maybe need some help in reading. And so you say, "I'll do that. I'll come in there." And and all of a sudden, one of these kids that just kind of capture your heart, and then you sign up for this mentoring program. And they're, maybe they're in first grade, and second grade, and third grade, and and then you help them get out of elementary. And then imagine you're standing there, and they've got a cap and a gown on. They've graduated. They've done it with honors. Or they've graduated and they're, they'll do their promises, made it possible for them to go to college. And you realize that your investment in their life is most likely going to help them change the family dynamic for the rest of their life. Maybe it's the first son or daughter that's gone to college in their, in their family. And they look at you and they hug their mom and dad and they say, thank you, mom and dad. And they look at you and with a tear in their eyes and say, thank you for investing in my life for 11 years. That's an investment, Amen. Will all of you do that? No. Will some of you do that? I think so. And I love the idea that we are adopting this school. And I want you to call Red or Brown. I want you to say, that's my school. I want you to own it. I want you to say, that's my school. We're going to participate. I want, you know, you, some of you will be up there painting on the walls, and you're, and, you're make, and you're doing whatever you can, okay? I've got kids that have grown, have grown up in this district. All three of my kids have went to Yoakum. Great school. I love that school. Okay, fantastic. My kids are smart. I don't know about your kids. My kids are smart, okay? This school just, that was a joke. This school district has done well to, 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 uh, to educate them. But Red and Brown is now my school, okay? And we're going to get involved. And I just want to say this in love right now because I can feel like maybe a religious little thing saying, well, why would you invest? Because we're going to put, I think, Pastor Mark, how much is it in the budget? Six, four, 
$6,000 in 2018 budget will be, will be set aside just to help fund the projects that we want to do for Red and Brown. Okay? All right? First, first budget line ever created for that. And um, we're going to do that. We're serious. I've looked him in the eye and said, we're serious. We're going to do this. We're going to put money to it, and we're going to do it for the long haul. Okay? Um, but why would you do that? Right? Because let me just tell you right now, let me make this very clear right up front. Pastor Matt's walking down the hall one day, and he sees you got a kid pulled aside, and you, and you got him by the hand in the middle of school, and you're saying, now repeat after me, Jesus. <laughs> Pastor Matt's going to lead you out, and you won't go be back. Okay? All right? But why would you do that if you can't do that? You know what? Because this is the mindset of the local church in America these days. Only do what makes you look better. Serving is not serving if everything you do is to get a return. That's called working. I show up about 20 hours a week at Cross Life Church, and I get paid a full-time salary. That's a joke. I show up 40 hours. I'm, y'all, gonna, y'all laugh for them. Y'all won't laugh for me. I show up. I put in time. I get a paycheck. It's called working. That's not so. I don't serve the church. I work here. Okay? Serving is when you do something that absolutely will not make you look good, help you, get anything in return. It's all about what you're doing for them. Maybe God will ask you to serve a project sometime when it doesn't even make you feel good. I mean, a lot of times serving makes us feel good, but sometimes serving is absolutely nothing to do with us, and it's all about for somebody else. Let me read you a scripture out of Mark chapter 10. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came over and spoke to him. Jesus saying, teacher, they said... We want you to do us a favor. Jesus replied, what's your request? Verse 37, they replied, when you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you. One at your right and one at your left. They wanted to be what? Honored and seen and recognized. Okay? Jesus said to him, them, you don't know what you're asking. And I love this. Are you able to drink the cup I'm going to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I'm going to be baptized with? Verse 39. Oh, yes, they replied. Dumb answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. (laughs) They had no idea what he was talking about, being the cross, right? By the way, they did drink that cup. But if they'd have known the cup they'd have drinking, would they have said yes then? We're able. Jesus said, okay, you're going to drink that cup. You'll be baptized in the baptism of my suffering. Verse 40. But I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. God has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. Okay? And ten other disciples heard what James and John were talking about, and they got angry. Who do they think they are? Asking Jesus to be their best buddies and sit next to him. And I want to see him. And, 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 and so the, the, the point is here, the disciples are very introspective. They are very self-centered, It's all, and they are very... There, there's division amongst each other because everybody's thinking about themselves. Amen. Jesus called them together and said, boys, we need to have a come to Jesus meeting. Ha, <laughs> ba <laughs> He said, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people and the officials flaunt their authority over them. But among you, it will be Different. different. If we want to make a difference, we have to do something different. Whoever wants to be leader among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be the slave of everyone else. Verse 45, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give. Everybody saying give. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give. I've used this phrase about Cross Life Church, and I'm going to use it again. I hope we become a nameless, faceless body of people who don't care about the recognition, who don't care about the the glory, who don't care about the uh, publicity, 
I hope nobody in this town understands what we've done. I'm, this, is not a, this is not a publicity stunt. Come on, church, help me. This is not a publicity stunt. This is not so we can create great Facebook posts. As a matter of fact, I think it would be great is if after 10 years, the governor calls Mr. Tucker and says, Mr. Tucker, your school district is doing phenomenal, especially there's this, there's this school that has just grown leaps and bounds in all different areas, and what is your secret? And I, think, I hope that we do something that makes him look like a genius. <laughs> not that you aren't. And I hope, that, I hope that we can participate, and I, and I hope that, that the whole nation goes, what's your secret sauce of, of superintendent, you know, that you can, that you can take schools that, that, that might have not been doing great, and, you can, and, and that our name is never mentioned. And like he said, there's not, I'm a perfectly okay if no, church, uh, no person from that school or their parents or their family ever come to church here. I'm perfectly okay if, if all we do is smile and love and serve. Because we don't exist to be served, but we exist to serve and to give. Amen? Amen? And I think that for a church to say we're going to get involved in an institution that has laws that say you can't even share the gospel publicly. But we don't care because it's not about growing our numbers. It's about showing love to people. That there's a greater agenda, and it's not filling the roll book or the, or the membership card of the church, but it's about being light in the world. That's what we got a chance to do. That's what we're going to do. Amen? Amen. Stand up on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, a miracle has happened today. <laughs> Miracles are happening. It is 1133, and you are going to be the first person at the China Buffet. This has never happened in the history of Cross Life Church. You better thank the superintendent, Mr. Tucker, right now. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray that God would give us such favor with those kids, those teachers, that staff, with, that, we could, that they would just see something on our face every time we show up and hand them a Coke float and do anything to serve them. I'm going to ask you, if you feel led of the Holy Spirit, we have a basket right here. If you'd like to give to help fund this project of Red or Brown, and, and our missions budget to helping that school, like Pastor Matt said, this is going to get to where we are as invested in this as we are as in Nicaragua. Okay? Okay? And so if you want to give toward that, you can do that. And you can also, there is a, a, a text word. Do you have that? Yeah. They're going to put that on the screen where you can text. Huh? You can text the word schools, and it'll go straight to that fund. Okay? School, not schools, school. S H C O U L. I didn't go to school in Eldorado Public Schools. <laughs> That's one of them North Arkansas educations right there. S K O. Yeah, anyway. So. <laughs> so listen, listen. You can text school to 863 617 7171, or you can give them this offering, and we're going to help fund that missions project. Mr. Tucker, would you just step out here and just right in here where everybody can see you just for a second? That's right there. It's just fine. I want everybody to stretch your hands toward Mr. Tucker. I want to pray over him today. that okay with you, sir? <laughs> Holy Spirit, we just ask you right now to anoint this man. God, that you have given him a calling to lead the school district. And we just pray in the name of Jesus, I just pray that he would have creativity beyond his ability. I pray that as Ephesians 1.17 says, that you would give him a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That he would carry authority and wisdom and revelation that you would give inside of his relationship with you, God. That you would, that you would spring forth like a well, creativity out of him. That, God, he would do things that have never been done 
that, that would just that would bring results about young men and women who would be, grow up to be doctors and who grow up to be, be key people in uh, positions of authority in our cities, that out of El Dorado we could raise up a generation of young people that become the men and women of God that you called them to be and created them to be, and productive members of our society. I pray, God, that you would give him such favor, anointing, and wisdom that, that he would be able to just do his duties, God, with excellence and in a way, God, that honors the kingdom of heaven and honors this community. And so we bless him today. We say in the name of Jesus that under his leadership, there is a, a hedge of protection over this district, over this, the school systems, God, that, that not only has he created a place of excellence, that the promise would be more than just a promise of, uh, of funds for education, but it would be a promise that we could grow up inside of a safe, secure environment where kids can grow up to find their identity and who kids can grow up to know that they are cherished and loved and honored and they could be the men and women of God you created them to be. You're going to put in his heart ideas that have not even been thought of yet by the people in the education industry, and he's going to be a pioneer in doing some special and amazing things in education. And we just prophesy that and release that over him today in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, say amen. 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 I want you to lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. On your way out the door, you can come and give. Holy Spirit, I bless your sons and your daughters, your kings and your priests. I pray in the name of Jesus that the joy of the Holy Ghost would fill their hearts that they would have um, an amazing uh, just peace about them this week, and they would be able to, to be that light, and they would be able to lead somebody to Jesus this week, as Mr. Tucker talked about. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. I love you. Have a great day.